Hello there, welcome to my reaction to A Close OP by Tirzu. I don't know what else to say. Claws, eh. If they're retractable, can you imagine having claws on the human hand? That would be OP. But normally, claws have a specific pause they connect it to. So we'll see what is much better description than I can do. I don't know, like, comment, subscribe, become a member, let's begin. That, the bird claws, at least from birds like that, are OP because of the speed the bird can take. They work well in tandem with something else. That's what makes some claws OP. When specking your character, it's important to choose equipment that integrates well with your chosen build's combat style exactly. and minimizes its inherent vulnerabilities. Weapons like horns and fangs are capable of inflicting massive damage, but using them in battle can leave a player vulnerable to counterattacks, and their value is mostly yeah, limited to 1v1 situations. Balancing the risk and damage potential of launching an attack is a key strategic consideration when equipping any type of weapon. God, so today we'll discuss fucked. one that comes as a standard feature on many of the most viable builds in the game. Claws. Claws are versatile, close-range weapons that can be used for close or range defense without sacrificing much in terms of mobility. They do require the user to get somewhat close to an enemy to launch an attack. But due to the low end lag on most standard slashing and swiping claw strikes, these tend to be one of the safest attack options a player has access to. Unlike some other weapons, claws can usually be regenerated if damaged, allowing them to be used freely with minimal risk. Claws can be used against multiple enemies at once if the build has decent mobility, making them an excellent choice for generalists and tanks alike. They can also be specialized into a variety Close of secondary perks permanent. that allow the user to climb, dig, permanent. or run at extreme speeds I mean. without slipping. Claws can be optimized for piercing, slashing, or crushing damage depending on which basic type you spec into. While some members of the arthropod faction have tiny hooked claws that are used for the mobility perks alone, others equip pincher type claws called kile that can inflict massive crushing damage. The size of kile relative to the user's body varies between build classes, but they can be used in combat even on the smaller end due to the additional perk of being able to immobilize opponents. Crustacean builds like crabs and lobsters can use claws to crush or dismember prey, Damn. a devastating attack if it connects, though it can be fairly easily dodged by more mobile players. Scorpions can use their claws to inflict knockback or as a physical barrier to keep an enemy away from their vitals but they also enable them to use an extremely powerful grappling combination move. While an enemy is immobilized in their claws, scorpions use their flexible stingers to inflict massive piercing and venom damage. This attack is more effective than crushing alone, but the trade-off between physical power and venom potency means that some scorpions are still weak against builds that can deflect or withstand their stings. Instead of modifying entire limbs into crushing pinchers, many tetrapod builds can equip individual claws to each digit and then use them to inflict piercing or slashing damage. Human have Reptile claws, and mammal builds that spec snails. into claws usually equip them to all four limbs, using them for combat when I, as well as the- When I said imagine, I meant like big claws, retractable ones. Like, like a cat can have, but also... What is the word? I don't know, increased in size for, because the human hand is much bigger than the paw of a cat. Their broad array of secondary functions. Tetrapod builds in earlier expansions experimented with a variety of claw specializations, with Therizinosaurus dumping the most evolution points into the trade of any build in history. Damn. These giant curved claws were primarily used to hook and pull vegetation in order to access the best loot, but they served the secondary function of being used to attack or intimidate predators in a similar strategy to that of anteaters in the current meta. Megatherium is another example of a build that went all in on claws, Megatherium. but theirs were specialized to withstand the impacts of intense digging, oh, no. and thus were much more powerful in combat as a result. Although Megatherium were large enough to repel most enemies using intimidation alone, succeeding in a meta where Smilodon were the apex predators meant that their claws needed to be ready for serious action when necessary. 
While Thanizarosaurus and Megatherium are no longer playable builds, the basic Tetrapod Claw specializations that they pioneered are still influential in today's meta. While some mammal variants spec into nails or hooves instead, the claws are still an extremely common limb equivalence. equipment choice and are used for everything from climbing and foraging to attacking enemies. Digging is a common specialization for mammal players, with builds like the armadillo and anteater leveraging their claws to access hard-to-reach resources. At the extreme end of this ability, moles use their long, thick claws and sensory modifications to complete their entire playthroughs in subterranean maps, where they can farm out invertebrate players for XP. Other mammal builds spec into lighter claws to preserve dexterity and use them more in a generalist fashion, but this means they can only inflict minor scratch damage in combat situations. The cloven hooves of even toed ungulate builds like pigs and deer technically are claws as well, really? which add cutting edges to already powerful limbs and increase the damage inflicted by kicks. Okay. Mammals in the Carnivora faction all have claws, but only some are fully dependent on them to take down enemies. Felids have extremely sharp claws that retract when not in use, conserving their durability and allowing them to move silently when preparing to ambush an opponent. These claws provide additional traction and therefore movement speed when extended, but more importantly, they Those greatly increase both the damage and grappling capability of these felids. Of this beasts. grappling can be used in a deadly combination, where claws immobilize an opponent so the user can safely inflict lethal bite damage. They are also remarkably effective for climbing, which opens up access to areas with a map that other carnivore builds can't reach. With some of the best speed and power stats in the game, felids are absolute killing machines that use claws to decimate bird and mammal player bases. For builds which lack the ability to retract their claws, the repeated contact with the ground causes them to become dull and less useful for climbing or combat, but they do still provide solid mobility bonuses. Such stamina consumption. Since bird forelimbs are with modified into wings, most avian builds can only equip functional claws to their feet. Hoatsons have a unique smart. ability to equip claws to their forelimbs that are used for climbing, but this ability is shed at higher levels in favor of flight, and all other birds are restricted to hind limb claws only. While this may seem like a limitation, members of the raptor faction use their claws and wings in conjunction to carry out some of the deadliest ambush attacks in the game. Their absolutely busted sensory abilities and mobility stats allow them to attack the before well. an opponent can even detect their presence, impaling them with sharp talons before they have time to react and counterattack. However, raptor legs are relatively short and their wings can't deal much damage in their own right, which limits their ability to counterattack when an enemy launches an attack on the ground or from behind. In a major departure from the typical avian playstyle, some birds dump something. evolution points into their legs and feet at the expense of their flight ability. This strategy like hinges on having style. a high enough run speed to evade art, most enemies like new art and enough power added. in their legs to disembowel enemies with dagger-like claws when challenged. Both types of avian... Last video I did was on humans, which was a very old video, and I was saying that the, there wasn't that much change happened, just the improvement of the formula, but then... I feel like this and the previous video, not not previous to, not the one I reacted previously, but previous on the channel, I think completely, not completely different, but there are a lot of additions in this one. ...builds can be viable against certain opponents, but their inability to inflict much damage with their wings leaves them vulnerable to rushdown and more powerful builds, and underscores the benefits of having claws equipped to all four limbs. Claws are an excellent weapon choice for players with the flexibility and limb lengths needed to maximize their threat range. But even on less mobile builds, they're still well worth the investment. These versatile weapons are at their best when they're used either as a safe, non-committal attack to chip away at an opponent, or as part of a grappling combination move that anchors an opponent in place while additional damage is inflicted by either teeth or stingers. As the top tier claw users, felids are definitely OP as they have pretty much the perfect setup to maximize the utility of their highly specialized claws. So don't expect to immediately skyrocket up the tier list the moment you spec into the claws trait, as the Felid class may be a bit of an outlier. However, claws are still a valuable addition to almost any build that can equip them, and cost very little in terms of evolution points considering how many new options and strategies they can add to a character. On the subject of claws, you may have noticed that I didn't discuss one of the game's most famous claws in this video. On that note, I have a bit of an announcement. I've been secretly working on something big, my own 3D animation studio. I want to make one of the best educational wildlife shows ever, and finally answer the types of questions that I constantly get asked. Who would win in a fight between... Well, I mean, take your pick. 
So far, I've been limited sure. in what I've been able to show on this channel, since many animals never meet, and are separated by either distance or time. Through the magic of 3D animation, I want to bring these confrontations to life for all of you to witness. The That's first episode will pit one of history's most of lethal claws against one of prehistory's most deadly fangs. I've been working super hard, and although the first episode isn't quite ready, it'll be premiering on Nebula soon, and I don't want you to miss it. Many of you know by now that Tears has been a longtime partner of Nebula, a creator-owned streaming service whose mission is to empower creators to make high-budget content that they couldn't otherwise. Well, I'm no exception, and I'm really shooting for the moon here. So please, check out the sponsor of today's video, the Nebula Curiosity Stream Bundle. Curiosity Stream has thousands of amazing non-fiction titles on there already for you to check out while I put the final touches on this show, including personal favorites of mine, like Out of the Cradle and Amazing Dino World. And on the Nebula side of things, Real Ready Life Lore's course. Modern Conflict series and Real Engineering's Battle of Britain series are must-watches. The bundle is only $14.79 a year, already one of the best deals in streaming, and that's before you add on the high-budget 3D show that I'm launching. So I hope you like it, and thanks for watching. Okay. Yeah, this this was different, and I noticed that there are a lot of 3D animations, but I thought he just took them from the internet. But apparently not. Very good. He is uh, diversifying, is that the word? His portfolio? Like doing multiple things at once, not just YouTube, which is a good idea. YouTube is not. There is a chance that it will go down at some point, and anyone who's solely getting money from YouTube will be shafted. Anyway, uh, thank you, anybody who watched this. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye, have a great life, because one of us has to.